Hello, people of the internet. Hello, howdy, howdy, time howdy. Time for another Ace episode Q&A. edition of the Ace Q and A for February 2018. 2018. And I'm Thomas Blair. I'm J. Todd Coleman, lead designer, creative director. There you go of Crowfall. We are here to answer questions from you about our game. That's it. <laughs> That's all we need. That's, That's it. Are we ready? All right. What all right. We got. Can we get a dual command so that we can duel each other in the faction campaigns? And how hard is this to add? It's actually surprisingly complicated, right? Because everyone thinks to, it's easy. Yeah, we, we would have to write a wrapper. Well, I'm assuming I, I can give you a duel. You can already fight yourself in the camp, in the in the faction world. Yeah, right? but you if we're on the same team. It. Oh, so this is for campaigns or EKs? Uh, for factions, faction campaigns. Yeah, it's still, we'd have to write an entire wrapper around combat just to override the normal rules of engagement. Right? And you have to ensure that even when you win, you can't kill the other person. Right, if the other guy doesn't... Do you, you take the them to one health and then die. you win. So that means it's going to have to touch combat code, friendly fire code, uh, death code, DK <laughs> code, right? Because you don't want to have your stuff decaying. That would be lame. Well, so what we could do... Do you want to use up arrows? Then we got to have the consumables. <laughs> it's, it's, it's shockingly impactful. For something that is like, you know, you can you can still do it. It's not ideal, but you can go to an EK and fight each other. I know, because people do it all the time. Yeah, that's about all you could do right now. So, could we do it? Yes. It's one of those situations where I'm not convinced that the juice is worth the squeeze. It's, as Todd likes to say, just another damn thing. Yeah, it's another thing. And it's not a thing that we have to have for release. And I'm trying to concentrate mostly on stuff that we feel like we have to have for release. Because once the game is out, and in theory profitable, that means on an ongoing basis we can add stuff forever. But if we don't get there because we stick too much stuff in the path in between here and there... Yeah, we need to pick what we're going to do. Absolutely. (laughs) Because you can't do everything. There you go. All right, let's move on. Juice is not worth the squeeze. Okay, can we have a video option to turn down spell effects as soon as possible. That we are working on, right? We're working on an LOD system for the effects. uh, And we need to just go back and do a pass on the effects because some of the stuff, like I noticed the AOEs have that big thick band. And if that hits the edge of a building, it like creates a giant 80s style neon banner (laughs) that stretches up the side of the castle. So we've got a lot of fixes coming in that area. So So there there is a system and there's a couple bugs to fix. Yeah, yeah, So So definitely. We're working on all of that. All right. And about 8,000 other things as we speak. Stealth and perception, how do they work? Do we want to answer that yet? I don't think we do. No, I can't. I, I've told it a couple times. Yeah, but you probably haven't talked to me about it enough, so you're probably wrong. No, no you, you've you okayed it multiple times. You really? had us change it. Yeah. It's basically, uh, if you're stealthed, nobody can see you. Now, if I activate a power that lets me see into the shadows, right, right then I can see as far as my perception skill allows me. Right. Right. So just think I have a bubble around me. I see into the shadows and I can see, let's say, up to 15 meters of stealth people if they're in that 15 meter bubble. If Todd walks into that bubble and he's stealthed, I would see him. Now, Todd has a bubble. Let's assume that Todd is stealth and in that shadow realm. He actually, his bubble is as big as his stealth stat. So if you have zero stealth skill, you have this really big bubble. Just think of it as noise. He's making a lot of noise because he's noisy and clanky. As his stealth skill goes up, that bubble shrinks down to very small. When those two bubbles touch, me seeing and his noise, boop, I can now see him. And that's it. All right. So that's... All right, so what we didn't get into is tracking and Tracking is an add-on. And, and we, all that stuff. Okay, that's the piece that, that, that yeah. I've got some, some big ideas of stuff I want to get to and I wasn't ready to talk about yet. Yeah, we're not so, ready to talk about that stuff. All right, so that's fine. So that's a baseline. Remember that what we're still doing now is laying a lot of foundational work to be able to build really cool stuff on top of. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that's a fantastic foundation. We've got a lot to add onto it and you guys will hear more about that in the future. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are there plans to fix the durability loss issues we are currently experiencing? Right now, you lose 10% of your total durability on health. Oh, yeah, that's busted. That means that regardless of your experimentation... Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Durability doesn't matter. It's, right? it's, it's always 10. So, yeah, so that is... Uh, I don't know if it's a if it was a bug or if it was mis, like, written up in the design originally or what. It's clearly broken. Yeah. But it's just we haven't gotten to fix it yet. It's just another damn thing. It's, yep. just, it's not... I, I, I know it seems like this is obviously broken. Why haven't they fixed it? And the answer is because there's about 8,000 other things just like that. And so we get to them as soon as we can and sometimes things are higher priority or things don't work or there's another piece that's being worked on in the same area and therefore we can't get in it's 
It's, it's a mess. So yes, we'll get to it. Has there been any work on the AI systems to enhance roaming monsters or Fort Keep city guards? We have a massive AI yes. uh, update coming. We haven't talked about that yet. So coming as part of 5.5 mm -hmm. is a first big chunk pass at making our AI better. Yeah, yeah. I guess is the best way to there put that. There was a lot of area, there was a lot of ceiling there to improve, I'd have to say. That's a polite way of saying the AI before was not great. Yeah. So it's definitely the first pieces of it should be coming in 5.5 along with some new monsters. Right. With the new adventure parcels. And uh, hopefully they will be way better. So let me, just to give an example of that, the previous version, monsters could only do one thing at a time. They literally could not walk and chew bubble gum Correct. at the same time. They'd have to take a few steps, stop, chew some gum. Finish chewing, take a few more steps. So, so fixing that and re-architecting to allow for actual... <laughs> realistic behaviors or at least pseudo realistic behaviors that's been a major um undertaking actually for one of our coders now for many months and it's finally yeah that chicken is finally coming home to roost you you you, you sound like it's so easy but it, it is extremely hard oh, to make things walk and chew bubble terrible. gum yeah it, it, no it's terrible it's a very very hard and time consuming problem but we've been investing in it a lot of times you guys don't see this stuff but we'll make a decision to invest in something and you won't see the results for like 6 or 9 months like that's just you know kind of the way it works and some of those you can't even get to until other foundational pieces are in line no absolutely so. and we often forget the game that you guys are playing because we've been playing the new thing for so long. Right, yeah, yeah, So when 5.4 yeah. when was getting ready to launch, Todd was like, hey, don't they have this, this, and this? I'm like, yeah, we've had that. Yeah. Players haven't seen that period yeah. yet, but now you guys have it. And it just, it takes time for, to get stuff to you. Yeah, so, you know, the process of things going from like, it's a design to it's a written design doc to it's an approved design doc to it's a technical design doc to it's implemented to I see it working on a developer's machine. I'm running out of room. Yeah. To I see it working on your machine. To I see it working in QA. To I can play it. Right. To it gets fixed and tested enough and quality is high enough that it goes to the test environment. Right. That's when you guys see it for the first time. And then after some amount of time cooking there, then it eventually goes live. So Blair and I are constantly running up and down this spectrum of time. Like we have to jump literally from, hey, there's a problem in live environment to, hey, remember that design we just started talking about the other day? We really need to write that up. We do that daily, constantly. Right. So it does make it hard for me to remember sometimes where things are on the pipe. So, I mean, Todd and I are constantly doing that. We're juggling 45 balls at various stages to try and keep everybody moving. Yeah, that's the thing is if, if we screw up on one of those, and that's been known to happen, somebody will get blocked and be unable to move forward on their job. So that's that's why we, we kind of have to do that. But, you know, it's yeah. fun. I mean, that's... I wouldn't do anything else. That's awesome. the gig, right? I yeah. mean, so that that's what we do. And I mean, that's to give you some insight why it seems to take so long for a feature to make it right. once we announce it. Because you probably hear an announcement from us when it's at the approved stage. Yeah. Right, it's 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 at one or of those. Or sometimes early... we preview it, right? Tuesday, Thursday update will be like, yeah, it's approved, and yeah, it's usually written up though. In fact, right. it, all, it like has say, to have some supporting three. art. It has to have either UI art or character art or environment, something you know that looks pretty to go with the update. Almost always, right? But we'll show something, and they won't see it for another three months, right? For example, maybe even four. So, anyways, let's move on to the next question. All right. Who will set the Thrall Guard Rules KOS Shop and Crafting Station access in the faction campaigns? Okay, so the faction campaigns have a general requirement that there is no leader, which is very odd, but it's because we don't, there is no leader. I mean, anyone can join a faction, which means by definition, the factions are open to people that aren't even going to play for that faction. So that means in the faction rules, we're kind of forced to do competitive or cooperative rules only. Right. Like the hippo for example, which is the thing you feed to create a tower, you don't. nobody gets to choose where the tower goes. It's already pre-chosen. Nobody that. gets to choose what kind of tower is built or how many or any resources go into it or whatever. Right. It's just the only thing that is allowed there is cooperative gameplay. We chip in, the thing builds. That's why the catapults are pre-placed. Right. That's why everything, everything is pre-placed. Pre because you have no control. If, for if somebody on your team is being an asshole, for example... There's nothing you can do about it. You just kind of have to suffer through. So we basically tried to degrief it as much as possible because they the worst they can do is not chip into the community pot. All right. Well, that right. the they're line e between asshole a team and slot, just but not a great player. And there's not even a slot, right? Right. There's, so, um, so I, yeah, I think generally speaking, that is to me actually been the most challenging rule set to build for 
has been the one where we we know there's no leader. In right. the dregs, we don't have to worry about that. We could have gone with the deed system for placing things a long time ago. Right, exactly. Right? We still we have to go in on the design side and place all these things to assume that someone is going to grief you if they can. Right, exactly. So um, so we're working on those other rule sets now. That'll be the next. You didn't. That wasn't really the question, but we're no. working on those rule sets next. Uh, we have a huge amount of that foundation done because it's actually already built out for the EKs. If you go into an EK right now, you'll see token limits of how many yep. large buildings buildings you can drop in a parcel. Right now they're set to 99, so they're not turned on really. Um, but eventually that's the same rule set we'll use for the dregs. It'll be, hey, this parcel is a village sized parcel. It only has X number of large buildings and the guild leader ultimately makes that call. And if they don't like a decision somebody in the guild has made, they need to deal with it. It's up to them to manage it. Up to and including kicking that person out of the guild. What if I go and put a bunch of walls on your thing? Then I am annoyed at you now and I can deal with you harshly. Or See, kick you out and of that's the, the difference is he can't deal with me in the faction In the campaign. faction world, there is no leader. So we, we don't have the option to do that. So All right. Moving there on. You go. Can we please get a hotkey to free the mouse? Right now, to accept an invite, they have to open their inventory. Okay, so that time. is buggy. The The invite thing is annoying as hell. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, I don't... Uh, so the question assumes a solution, which is the only solution to this is to free the mouse, and that's not accurate, Correct. right? It could easily be a Y is accept and N is no, right? Y for yes and N is no. It could be a return or so. I mean, there's other ways to solve that problem. So, yes, we'll solve the problem. Are we going to free the mouse? I don't know. Maybe. It has other, you know, right. ripple effect... Implications. There are things we still need to do, like Todd wants to trade with you, right? And I need to res have a way to respond with that. So there will be some type of wrapper for all of those things, right? Todd wants to invite you to a group, yeah. So, so I'm not going to say no. We're never going to do that. I'm just saying that when you ask a question, don't assume the solution because that's not necessarily the solution we'll use to solve that problem. I yeah. do recognize there's a problem, and yes, we do have to solve it, and we will. Uh, can you please define which race class skills are in each skill tree branch? Not only can we define it, but that, we're going to add that. In fact, I think it just got hot fixed in a five four. Is now on those branches, you'll see the symbols and the names for this group represents these classes. Yeah. This group represents these. Races. So that, that's absolutely coming. And we will put some more verbiage over there because we have a paragraph or two to put it in. Right, well. we'll do it there too. But right. I mean, that's, we'll, it's, in, that's in the lore we'll, text We are area. going to do it in multiple Very areas. Very few people read that, Blair. Nobody, I'd like to think a lot of people. Nobody likes my lore. Nobody reads it. A few people read it. And they're the best think people a, ever. I think a lot of people read it. Really? Yeah. Because that's what we give them to read on Tuesday and Thursday sometimes. No, sometimes. I love lore. So the reason I love lore, so... Because you don't have to write it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is some of that. But I like to put it on items and I like to put clues in the world because it's exciting to find those things. And you can just learn about the universe. Yeah. Right? And, and it's, a, it, it's a good way to provide some in-game content that people aren't going to a website uh, to look up. And you just find something and it has an interesting quote on it or it's written in the divine language and you're like... This is a weird, bizarre, question mark, Ori style, weird symbol looking language. What does it mean? Yeah. And then it, you ask those questions. So then you might go seek out or ask people to look on the website. It just gets you more immersed in the universe. And we have actually universe. done a bunch of the underlying work that there is a method to that madness. Right. Which is really cool. If you, if you were to actually dig into that, there is a decipherable language there, oddly enough. So wouldn't you be um, happy to know that somebody's appreciating yeah, that? Yeah, I know. Really? There's like three people that will ever check that out, and they are the best people in the world. They're my favorite. They people. will get special rewards. Yes. <laughs> well, no, that they won't. That's probably well, why. The reward of their lore. Yeah. We the can... reward of understanding the lore and the weird stuff that we've baked right. into it. Okay. Or they'll yeah. ask us some very hard trivia question, and you'll forgotten that because you wrote it three years that ago. That is also true. Yeah. And the reward is stumping Todd. Yeah. So. Okay. That's not a hard reward to attain. <laughs> Uh, here's one for the, the crafting tree. Why doesn't the crafting basic advancement to children's skill trees work on a 50% threshold to advance like the race class trees do? Well, so for crafting, crafting is a different style of advancement. So if you could at 50% go into any profession, you instantly have access to every advanced profession in the game at that first skill node pretty much for free. Okay. So what you have to do is each of the crafting lines has two or three prereq boxes that you have to get to, which means you're you're dedicating yourself towards blacksmithing or alchemy or whatever jewel crafting, for right. example. It's not that all of a sudden you have access to everyone and all the advanced recipes 
at the same time. Yeah, so we can talk about that a little bit. So one of the things that we're trying to go for now on the race class split, once we have races and classes and all the disciplines, and now we've got the the um, sacrifice system and the leveling mm -hmm. and stuff like that, is we wanted to go for more replayability, right? We wanted to have a really fast leveling curve, like super, super fast, like Diablo speed, not MMO speed. And you can kind of speed through the levels, and then you can try out different options. You right. can go, oh, now I want to try this character. Now I want to try this character. The problem was passive training directly fought against that because we were making you dedicate yourself to only one particular build and it took many, many, many months, right? So we wanted to speed that up and allow people to have a lot more fun. Now that we have this kind of explosive combinatory system, we want to let people explore that more. Yeah. Crafting, though, we don't have that, right? We have a much more dedicated, we want you to dedicate yourself to this particular profession. Yep. So it's it's a different goal, and for that reason, we wanted to structure the tables differently. So um, it, it does make, I can understand the question, right? It yeah, is, absolutely. It is kind of... Uh, it's non-consistent with the other ones, yeah, but it's absolutely. for a reason. But it is for a very good reason, which is that we specifically, having built this explosive race class discipline system, we want people to really explore it. So, uh, Is there a chance that Sprint could be turned on while in the stealth trade? That sounds reasonable. Really? Mm -hmm. Seems maybe a little... No, okay. It's not moving at sprint speed. Okay. It would be moving just a little bit faster at stealth speed. Okay. So you, you could burn stamina to go at... I think right now we're dropping you to 50% movement speed. Okay. So maybe 60% movement speed. Right. It just lets you feel like you could kind of get up to that guy to backstab him. There's a couple other things that I, I really want to do. I mean, remember mounts hasn't come yet. So I, when mounts comes online, that's going to have an impact on all of our player speeds as well. And Absolutely. I'd still love to go back to roads and give roads a speed up. So if you're going down a road, either that has an effect on your stamina, on your speed, or on your caravan animal speed. I think that would be really cool. What I really want to do is entice people... To use the roads. To use the roads, especially caravans. Like that would have a really good feeling to it. And giving them that, it would then become a risk reward, right? If 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 it's like, well, if I go down this road, I'm going to get there quicker. Mm -hmm. But people know that I can take the road to get there quicker, so they're more likely to ambush me. On the or road. I can kind of go off the road, I'm going to get there slower, but it's a little... So I like that. I like that idea of choice. So there's more stuff coming with speed. And with all the changes we've made with survival tray and stuff like that, I wouldn't be shocked if we revisit stuff like... Um, knock down, dizzy down, speed, sprint. I wouldn't be surprised if that stuff shifts a little bit between now and release. Or I mean, a lot. it will continue to shift forever, <laughs> right? right? I mean, it's just that yeah. it's just one of those things. Uh, is there any chance that table sockets could be added to the back of the pillars on the EK temples? No, we're not going to do that. That's a tie. That the crafting tables. We want crafting yeah. tables to go inside buildings, just like vendors. So that would snip a pretty significant need, which is I need to have a building. So um, yeah, you know, and and I want people to build buildings. I don't want them to. So nope, not going to do that one. Nope. Also, that would look really dumb. Like here's a temple to the gods. Let's just kind of stick a bunch of it. Would look like a bake sale or something <laughs> <laughs> on the backside of the temple. So no, we won't. We won't be doing that. Yes, none of that. Is there any chance that a trade chest could be added as a craftable object that takes a socket slot, like a work table? I assume for inside of a house. Uh, so a craftable uh, chest container. Bait. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I think that's a cool idea. I would like to do that. We'll have to limit them because I don't want houses to become infinite banks. Absolutely. Right? We can't do that. But having a container there, especially one that you can set right next to your crafting table, would be incredibly helpful, right? Yep. If you could open it at the same time, that'd be even better because then you could use it, right, for storing all your inputs and your outputs. Yeah, I think it's totally reasonable. That. Is there any chance that a storage chest with a name password security could be added as a craftable object that takes a socket slot like a work table? Basically, a chest that has a, a four-digit pin on it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, I could see a number of ways you could do it. We could have faction chest. We could have guild-based chest. We could have uh, combination lock chest. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yep. Uh, it also would be cool to have a lock pick skill that would actually, on certain chests, allow you to get into them. That would be cool, too. It'd be cool for the guy who doesn't own the chest. <laughs> right. So. Is there any chance that a basic weapon rack and basic armor rack could be added as a craftable object that could be socketed into the home? Um, so as an inventory like container, sure. As a display item, sure. Like I just want a display rack where yep. I can put up stuff that I want to sell. That would be really cool. A weapon rack, if they mean by weapon rack, the type that we have in the test server where you walk up to it, hit a single button and get a full complement of gear. No, I don't, I don't think we're going to expose that no. and testing those... command 
Yeah, live. Yeah, those will probably be going away with vendors anyways because it's kind of silly that we dump every available weapon in the game into your inventory because well, it, we don't know what you are. It's only for testing. I like, know. That's the only purpose of that thing. But It's so. going to evolve, though. So you'll yes. be able to go up to a vendor it and say, hey, to. I want that two-handed sword for free because I use two-handed swords. Okay, that'd be better. Right, because right now I'm dumping 20 items in your yeah. inventory and you're like, I'm going to throw this away and this away and this away and this away. You know, I'll ask a question that's sure. not on the page. So you just mentioned vendors. How's vendors coming? Have you looked at them? Yeah, I've seen a lot of code. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't seen it actually in-game yet. Okay. But the code is being written. That's pretty cool. I see lots of semicolons. Because I told you, you know, the process, and I mentioned, like, seeing it on the developer's machine is a step, then on your machine is a step, mm -hmm. then QA's machine, then mine. So we're kind of back here. We're at, I want to see it down here. We're, we made it through the, the big process to get to having an engineer go ahead and start working on it. Okay. And I see lines of code being written, but I still haven't seen it on his machine as a thing yet. Because cool. lines of code don't translate necessarily into a functioning thing. And once those come online, will I be able to use the gold that we've been dropping that has no purpose in the game right now? You will be able to. I like that answer. I kind of expected it. So. <laughs> uh, is there any stance that, uh, chance that a cooking station would count as a food fire? That seems absolutely like a thing we can yeah, do. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. It's, it's just kinda... we really haven't... That's one of the ones... Like, I'm working... Uh, in my free time now, I'm working on jewel, uh, the entire jewel crafting uh, profession. So... Cooking is on is on the table as well, but cooking just relies on NPCs right now as meat types, well, unfortunately. all of the crafting tables were initially kind of just shoved in, right? That's not the way they're supposed... The way they're working in the game right now is not the way they're supposed to work. Right now, it's kind of a... all you, Anybody who can use wants to use it just has to walk up and stand in the radius of it. And so it's they're all kind of campfire-like right now, and they're sort not supposed to be. That's That was a phase one towards the eventual solution, which we've kind of hinted at, but um, you guys will see that coming down the pipe at some point. We'll do a, another update to give you the heads up on how that's going to work as well. Most of the so. cooking I built so far has been based around Survivalist, yeah. which is yeah. designed to be out in the middle of nowhere. I just killed this thing. I need to make some brisket because I'm running low on food. Yeah. I can do it right here with a campfire. Yeah. Right. Eventually, you will probably have a lot of prepared foods that you've made back in the kitchen. Yep. The survival recipes are just for convenience. So... There you have it. Will the game sounds be modified slash scaled back? <laughs> yeah, so we should have mentioned that. So in 5.4, we did a massive update to use Wise, a, a Wise which is a third-party sound tool. And uh, it, it's way better for us now. It means we can do things like layering sounds together. We have a lot of more control over when they fade in, when they fade we out. We got footsteps and, with that one, I mean, too. it's all sorts I mean, of really, really cool features that it unlocked, but it did also go through... I mean, it kind of broke a bunch of... It threw a lot of things out of whack. So we have... Um, some sounds that uh, are misplaced or just got tied to the wrong thing. Or just too loud. We have some that are just way too loud. There's a few that also are kind of like, oh, I don't really like that sound. It sounded okay when you just listen to it in isolation in your headset. But you put it into the game and it sounds like your laser druid zipping around the right. map, right? So, so yes, we're going to do some more passes on the sound. Don't, but yeah, that don't get too hung up on the sounds right now. 5.4 was kind of a .5 implementation. We got it in. Yeah. We got a bunch of sounds added. And now we need to start tuning those things. Yep. I mean, that, that's where we're at. And it will get better in 5.5. There's already been a ton of work on the sounds uh, that have been done for 5.5. And the final question. The current death mechanic leaves a lot to be desired. No, you can you don't have to continue the, the question, actually, because they're right. <laughs> the one that they're playing is pretty bad. The one that is currently way back up here in the development stage, we've got a lot of stuff coming related to fixing death and respawn. We never even got around to doing res. Nope. And we do want to do it in a limited capacity. And we also have, I'll throw a teaser out just so you guys know it's coming, something from the mud days beheading, which is really cool. But I don't want to spoil it too much because that'll be the subject of yet another Tuesday, Thursday update coming soon. So we've just teased quick it. summary is, yeah, 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 we're doing a bunch of work on death and respawning. And it in fact ties into like world world transfer and teleporting and stuff. We got a whole bunch of stuff coming related to that. So yeah, I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah, it, no, it, it sounds sounds great. And I think ending this session, ending this whole Q&A on beheading is a pretty good <laughs> place to stop, don't you think? I think it's excellent. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for coming out for our monthly ACE Development Partners Q&A. Yep. Thank you very much. We will see you guys in game and hit us with your questions and we will hit them again next month. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Bye.